Yes, first of all, thank you for letting me come here and, and speak. I'm That's really uh, glad you're here. And uh, so Jacob is leaving after um, less than an hour or so, so yeah. let's make your session interactive. Yeah. So any questions to Jacob you should ask uh, during this. I have a flight this. home uh, this evening, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to miss it. <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> in uh, in uh, Bled earlier this year, I was also flying down, and I actually missed that one flight, so <laughs> let's not repeat that. Um, just. Uh, I will uh, talk a little about my experiences, uh, uh, static versus dynamic ERG. And it's not like uh, scientifically, I'll just talk about what I've experienced in my rowing career, what I find good about the one uh, machine or the one setup compared to the other um, when going fast on the water. Um, just a brief introduction. Uh, I have started a little, but so the interesting thing uh, is that I made a rowing seat actually for uh, the ERG um, after I myself had problems and got injured uh, multiple times uh, from sitting on the conventional rowing seats um, it's like when you have to go over your sitting bones mm -hmm. for a long time when going from the recovery into the catch mm -hmm. uh, it started to hurt and that, uh, it got so bad so I actually couldn't row during the winter on the rowing machine mm -hmm. um, and uh, then we made the CTO ceramic seat, and I will tell you a little about why we did that, uh, and how and how we did it. Um, um, yeah. So Denmark is a, a kind of a country like I think Finland. We have a we can can't row for the entire year on the water because uh, it's too windy or uh, the lake freezes. So we. Uh, have to go to the ERGs to train during the winter. And I often wondered in the start of my rowing career, um, we, when we finished the season, we were really good on the, on, the, on the water. And then we trained for the entire winter, getting really fit. And then when we went to the water, we were just going so slow. <laughs> That's basically, we, it was that. We, sometimes I, I, I wondered if we were completely novices because the boat was going doo -doo 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 -doo, and uh, from one side to another and we were going so slow because we had like been sitting on the concept 2 for the entire winter and we were in brilliant shape I can say we were doing great numbers every year um, and we were big and strong and uh, as soon as we started to pull less and work more together we rode faster and it was like really really this really annoyed me um, so we actually also started to think about what is we are doing wrong in the rowing machine. Um, why is we were in Denmark? We are quite conservative. We only used the static erg during the winter, sitting next to each other every training session and just rowing as hard as we could every time. We only train uh, once a day in Denmark during the winter season because uh, we have jobs and studies beside. Uh, so every training session was like a competition for us. Um, and uh, we also started not to actually, uh, we started, we, we improved a lot during the first time of the winter. Uh, our form or our shape got better and then we actually often got worse. So that if you, if you train harder and then you don't get, uh, get better, you start to wonder what are we doing wrong. Um, and then in 2000 and 13, 14, we started to introduce the dynamic rowing machine. Uh, and we have a, there's a lot of uh, different uh, machines. There's obviously the one uh, with the sliders. There's uh, the, the, this one, that the one we used. Uh, and the other three also, we also used. Um, and we actually found out that these machines were way better for us when we're doing the long sessions. Because we had to row, it's, it's a brilliant way of not, of actually having to keep uh, focus on doing the right thing. Because if you open with your body, when you sit on the on the dynamic row, rowing machine, it won't work for you. And so as soon as you sit on the on the station on the static work, you just open, and then the number is perfect. And then once you compete against the, the guys next to you, you just keep doing that. Um, Another thing, I think it's uh, what uh, also is going to be told a little bit later, and I discussed earlier, is what about how uh, hard it is for your body to sit on the 
static machine because it's actually almost 50% upper body and 50% legs. Compared to sitting under water, it's more, it's the percentage is changed. You use lots more, a lot, lot more of leg power and not so much upper body. Have you ever also experienced that? Some of you? When's it coming? coming um, and in that way, during the winter, we found out that when we were sitting on the static machine, we got really big in the upper bodies. And for lightweights, obviously, that's not uh, too good because we have to lose the weight again. And, uh, and we don't, we're not using um, training the same muscle groups as efficient as we should and what we're doing on the water. So that was, that was not good. Um, so we tried to do the, all um, our training uh, on the dynamics for, for one year. Uh, and then we actually got in worse shape. Not physically, uh, we got, got in worse shape, but technically we got better. So we thought, how are we going to find the sweet spot? So keep the technique good, but also have the physical uh, cap uh, capacity up, keep it up during the winter. So a mix of the static <coughs> and the dynamic, uh, we found was good. Um, so when we were going really for the really hard races against each other, like intervals with high intensity, we were always sitting in the uh, sta static work. So one of the good thing is that you can't go uh, at, the, at a, that higher rate once you sit in the, the static. Once, if you do a 2K on the, on the sliders, have it one, some of you tried it? Yeah, you're, what, what was your stroke rate? What uh, you I, think? Think I went 38 or 39 something. Yeah, but if you were doing what in the in a static uh, erg, what if you should come here? 32, 33. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. In about 34, 35. <laughs> yeah, because you we were also doing it. We could go a little higher. We were some of us were doing 45 for 2k, mm -hmm. and we started thinking this is not efficient either because we were going way too high and was not comparable to the water. So we tried to say, okay, then we, it may not be as, the movement may, may not be the same as on the water, but we can get a more like a realistic picture of what our performance is and then keep the stroke rate a little bit down. So we, that was uh, the comfort of the sweet spot we found. The, the longest training sessions, when we really wanted to get some volume in without uh, getting our backs without getting them really sore. Um, and thinking about technique, we could do that in the dynamic herbs. Um, and then we could do the hammering in the statics. That was uh, the right thing for us. It can be different. There's also one size doesn't fit all, but it's something I think uh, to think about when uh, training in the winter. And also think about what is it that I want to get out of this training session. Always thinking about that. Um, for myself, I was so happy when I saw the sensor earlier for one and a half year ago, I think, yeah. at the Danish National uh, Championships. Because I have we had often wondered if we couldn't move, see, or get some data on our seat movement in the uh, rowing machine, especially in the, on the statics. Because in the start of the winter, as I said, we were, do, we were doing the right thing. Uh, when we came from water, fast legs hanging, not opening with the body. And the longer we came into the winter, the more upper body and the more upper swing we came, uh, where you was used. And it's obviously, we ha you can't see on the concept two uh, what uh, your seat speed is if you're not having a measurement system. So we, uh, and you don't get the feedback. Yeah, you may have the coach telling you, you should hang more, but let's be honest. As soon as uh, the guy beside you is going fast, <laughs> you forget all about that. <laughs> I myself did. <laughs> uh, so I think it's a brilliant tool to help keep, also to get, to keep the right movement and get the feedback. Um, also, when sitting on on the static bird, uh, that would have uh, helped for me. Um, and now we're coming back to the thing about rowing seats. Or rowing machines. Myself, I told you earlier, I got injured from uh, sitting on the 
on this, these seats. It was actually that bad when I was uh, studying for an exam. I had to lay in bed because uh, when I was sitting on, on the chair, I was just in oh. Because my sitting bones, I had got, um, gotten what it called inflammation. On that point, from, on uh, the ischias neon, mm. I think they're called, from sitting and going far, forward and back. Uh, and uh, as a lightweight, I may not have had so much uh, <laughs> extra yeah, <laughs> in that uh, area. But then I, I start to, to talk with some of the other guys about it and say, guys, do you also have? Yeah, yeah, especially for the long sessions. I don't, I'm not thinking about, about the number, I'm just thinking about my yes, it's really. Uh, and then I, I heard that more people were actually having the same problem, but were not talking about it. And then we, uh, we, I heard one of my uh, former teammates, um, Eskil, uh, I don't know if uh, you have heard about him as a guy, our most famous guy in Denmark, uh, who has been on the, the lightweight four in Denmark and has been at the Olympics many times. He was always sitting on, on a big cushion uh, made in a special uh, way, like, and then I asked him, can I borrow your, this one? And I felt, it felt really, really strange at first. Uh, and I, I didn't like it, to be honest. But I tried to row on it for a couple of times. And then I found out, hey, this actually works for me. Uh, so I also want to, to show you, uh, I'll give you a, um, a short video. Let's see. The concept of the seat is that the, it's higher here in the middle, so it takes off the weight of the sitting bones. Now we are able to spread out the weight. The oxygen is able to come through with the muscles that are very close to the sitting bones. What we also found out is that the, the holes, they shouldn't be round. When you sit on it the first time, it, uh, it may feel a little bit strange, but as a new running shoe, you have to get used to it. So if you have the problems with conventional seats, this will help you on the long run, but you have to, of course, get used to it. So did you get the main point? From uh, from oops, yeah, we're just lying. Okay, we're just. Um, the main points from that is that we take the with the seat. We're trying to take the pressure off the sitting bones, for, and for people who don't have that much uh, uh, extra on that part of the body, it helps going forward and sitting over. I was for myself was sitting uh, after 10-15 minutes, not going forward in the right position onto the catch, staying behind the seat because every time I had to go over, it just it just hurt. And then I got also I got a, uh, a wrong sitting position when I had, had to approach the catch. So I was just sitting, no, no, no. And then in the last 10 um, centimeters, no, doing that. And that's not uh, the ideal way to train over a longer period because I was not training in the right, uh, the right uh, way, I would like to say. Um, another thing we uh, also found out and it was very good to, to measure is that the static erg helps. Um, oh, you can, the longer you go, the longer stroke you take, the better. I don't have you also experienced that. If you want to have a good uh, score, you just go way back. Um, and that it really works on the erg, it doesn't work on the water. As soon as you pull, throw your back really long behind, the boat starts jumping. So we also want to have the same movement on uh, the on the rowing machine. And for that, the static uh, the static is not ideal because it actually, if you want to have good erg score, you just keep doing it. In that case, the dynamic helps also sit more up and keep the right position, like sitting on the water wave. It's better to sit a little more up and then front load the stroke. That's, uh, I think that's uh, the main points from, uh, from my 
Do you have any questions? So is the seat up to the seat more upright in the finished position too? Yeah, it has a little, what do you call it here? Uh, extra in the in the back, so it, it will uh, like stop you a little. Okay, yeah. Say okay, uh, come back. It also has a little extra. I don't. It's not that flattering, but have some of you experienced when you sit on the erg on the conventional seat, you can get a little, get a little, little uh, sort. Uh, can get a little bit wounded here once you go to the bath, and then what's called called. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, then for that, we have made an extra, so you actually also don't get that. Uh, and then we found out that different people also have different, don't need, may not need that much support on the middle face. So you can actually uh, take the wedge out and then this midsection uh, doesn't support that much. And for people that need a lot of support, getting a lot of pressure off the sitting bones can take a half wedge in. Also helping to get, I would suggest if uh, the seat is not for everybody, it's only for people who actually have the problem of people who are rowing, using it for long, uh, have to do long uh, erg sessions, it can help keeping doing the right uh, movement for longer time. I actually tested the seat. Yeah. After this, and uh, it told, told me that I have uh, I have tightness in the left glutes. Yeah. And when I roll the normal erg, it doesn't tell me. Okay. That one actually told me that I have stiffness tightness more in the left glutes. Okay. So that was actually awesome to feel yeah. that uh, I have the tightness when I roll there. So That's good. I have, have juniors try that also, but they are too light when they are 40, 50 kilos. Yeah. I'm like 50 kilos, I'm 100. Yeah. So I, I, it's good for me, but I think we need a junior model of the seat also. Yeah. For those who are 40, 50, 50 kilos of the weight. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, so that's, I think that one is too steep for the light people. Yeah. We have ones, it's okay. Yeah, I, th I think, because uh, it's, it's like, because some, it's like, some people, uh, even light people say it's yeah. good, and some say no, not all. So it's like, it's not, uh, it doesn't fit all, and no. it should not, in my, because the point is that it should help those people with those problems, mm -hmm. getting uh, more, beneficial training session. So you think about getting better doing the right thing instead of thinking, oh no, oh no, I have to go forward uh, after doing half an hour and you sit down on the erg again and you just think this is going to be a very, very long one. <laughs> um, that, that's not, that's my, wrong shouldn't be a pain in the ass. I think it's quite a good slogan for that. Uh, Yes. So, so you are the Olympic medalist. Uh, so, uh, just to understand how much you are you were practicing in a crew uh, in a little time. Yeah. I mean, together with the robots, or uh, and how much alone, and how did you make those kind of together? We crew uh, workouts. We in Denmark we have uh, the idea that uh, we all have to live in Copenhagen and train, and we train together every day as a crew. And when we do ERGs, we sit beside each other, trying to give each other feedback on how we row, but also on uh, that we actually pull hard enough or do the effort every day. It's easier to see if people are there every day that your teammates are doing the same effort as you are. Otherwise, it can be a little... Obviously, we trust each other, but it's always good to see that uh, if you have days where you're not very motivated, that somebody else is coming saying, let's go for it today. Uh, I found that good, um, and as for um, we obviously we were training together every day, but we were also uh, having a lot of thoughts in the last part of our my rowing career, the last two years, about what we needed from every training session. So we were thinking about if we, it was a long, boring training session, we were thinking about how can we make it more, epic, uh, more fun, and then would be to sit on the uh, dynamic or the uh, concept two with sliders, sitting beside each other, trying to copy, to stay in the rhythm, uh, and and row right in the in the right way, uh, even if, and keeping concentration for a long hour. That that was one, and some other days, obviously, as I told, it was just to go for it. Uh, but but every day. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we were not the. I think 
one of the things in Denmark, uh, I think we are a little like Finland here. We are not full-time professionals in, in rowing. We don't get funded that much. So we have to think about other ways to be uh, competitive. And that's thinking about how could we, as a crew, be good enough uh, to compete against uh, Great Britain or uh, New Zealand and what the great na rowing nations. So that's to set uh, the crew, crew early and then develop develop it over a long time so that we get skilled as a crew to come to be uh, competitive. In Denmark, I think we have uh, the last year in 2015 we actually didn't have a spare man. We had to pull one out of retirement uh, to to get a spare when one of the guys got uh, injured. So he was weighing 80 kilos <laughs> one and a half months before the European uh, Championships. <laughs> there was a little bit of a uh, he had to lose a lot of weight and he had to get back in shape. That was. But, but it, I think we got a bronze medal, so it was really good. <laughs> but it was not uh, at, at the point where the injury happened. We were really, really thinking, okay, we are not even going to make uh, Olympic qualifications. I think, uh, because we were Did you go like the pieces every day? or No, yeah, I think uh, this always uh, programs, training program keep developing because we get the scientific uh, or studies that show that different people respond to different programs. So we have for every, we have like tested what everybody uh, in the fall is responding for on. So we have a program we all do, and then we have some separate uh, things we need to do to uh, respond to the training. Uh, but we, we did a lot of high intensity training also in winter. I could uh, easily do and now do uh, pieces uh, so you, you had a lot of testing and so you knew what you have to train to get better and you like focused on that so you knew exactly what to train so yeah. you could save some time. Exactly, we're, we're doing the things, we, we could do more train obviously, we, I think we could have a benefit out of but it's also what's realistic, it's not, not training for training if you have like an exam hanging over your head and uh, your girlfriend is not mad at you and everything you're not getting better of training by an extra time. It's about when you train, you train to get better and you're mentally uh, prepared, you're motivated and you're ready to get better. It's not about just keeping more, we call it the pau uh, uh, where you just go down and train but you're, really, you're not mentally uh, in, in it. We don't like uh, those training sessions, then we think it's better to say, stay away. Uh, I read uh, from some articles that uh, Danish rowers have suffered from uh, reef stress fractures. Yeah. So what's your experience? Did your crew have such problems? Or I myself haven't had uh, uh, ribs fracture. I think I'm pretty... Uh, I also think uh, we are going to discuss. But I think it's basically because we also had a PhD written about it. Because in, uh, in some years all had uh, rib fractures, uh, and it's because you sit, when you sit in the static di static erg, you get like a pressure this way, and then when you do it uh, for too long, you start getting uh, inflammation in the ribs, and once that sits for a longer time, the rib is starting to yeah, crack. Yeah. Basically, it's a, a fatigue uh, break. Is it called that? In yeah. yeah, fatigue break because uh, you keep. Uh, stimulating a thing that uh, has inflammation. Or, or stress fracture. Stress fracture, exactly. Um, we, um, you, the thing is you have to train hard and not just take a break because it's, uh, cause you, you feel tired. But about that we have been, uh, we, every time we had something here, uh, we had to go to the physio and uh, he, he was uh, testing us right away. Uh, but often uh, things hurting here actually come from the back because you have something sitting wrong, uh, let's be honest, rowing is quite hard for your back. Uh, um, and uh, so often for me, it was not an issue. There was, I just needed to get the uh, stimulator, or what you call it. More Pro mobility in the power Yeah, power exactly. Yeah. <coughs> yes? Yes, did you actually use the seat for the boat as well? Or I was not, the, I'm not using the seat in the boat, uh, my colleagues are. Because uh, in the I 
I'm only using it when it actually I have a problem. I don't have the problem on, on the water. I can solve it by a small question. Um, but when this because I was using the big impacker seat, so I have like big holes in. Now when I'm uh, I'm retired now or having a break from rowing, I'm out in boats where I don't have the seat I prefer. There I'm using it. Otherwise my my legs. Yeah, I mean, all you do it internally. If you put it put the seat the train next on a rowing boat, do you like put it on the regular seat or yeah have? yeah I'm, I. Because I'm shifting boats, I don't sit in the same boat every time. Okay. So I just take the double uh, thesa and put it on, and then it stays okay. for me. Yes. And then I can take it away, and I don't have to. Because uh, 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 I would, yeah, I row in different boats. It's hard to install a seat, uh, and that's also our big issue that we want to have a, a solution for the boat. But most people switch a lot. Uh, Boats, and then then it's not efficient because if uh, another guy doesn't like to sit on it, it probably should not. Do you have any tips? So you make make it like stiff, so it won't move. You know, the boat to keep it uh, so. Yeah, well, I would say double, just the double. Uh, double sided tape here. I mean, yeah, okay. it's yeah. quite easy to keep. Uh, so I, I think this has been a more or less uh, kind of optimized for the uh, uh, yeah. ergo seat shape. So yeah. it works very well there. It works very well in a, in a wooden boat also. But if there is a lot of shape under this, yeah. then it's not that good anymore. No, exactly. But the it works on the flat impacker seat with the big. It also, uh, but the, the Philippe seat has a lot of shape yeah. in it, and that. In that uh, case, it doesn't work that well. I will agree on that point. One question. Yes. Did you get the problem with your hips from the peak power training or from the volume? I um, I think I got it from uh, the rowing on the con conventional, but yes. because I was my coach adjusted my rowing style, I have always had a, like a laid back style, and then he started to have, wanted me to sit more up and getting uh, the, my, that I was keeping my hip in the right position. And once he started doing that, I got injured. Uh, so it came from a technical change. Yes. Um, and then we discussed that if I, uh, one solution was to just keep sitting like this, right? And that, that was not efficient, uh, or trying to make some adjustments, because the doctor in Denmark said, it's like, uh, if you do it again, you will get it again. If you keep rolling over, you get the inflammation or stress down there, and then you will get injured again. It's like, I'm not really interested in that. I think that the... Uh, Thank you, Jacob. So uh, I think you're here for maybe half an hour. Still, yeah, so yeah. what we'll do now is, uh, we'll uh, 